So at the outset, uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate Dr. Ritu, Dr. Ramit, Dr. Dharmendra, and the entire team of PSC, and also thanks a lot for this wonderful opportunity, and that too uh, to discuss on another important topic that is continuous glucose monitoring in pregnancy. So let me start with two different case case scenario. Actually, uh, I'm not going in into the details of this case, but just showing the basics of uh, th this two particular cases. The first one, a 28 year old lady working in a bank, she's very busy and diagnosed with uh, diabetes during pregnancy. And as usual, uh, going by the recommendation or guideline, started treatment with uh, diet modification, but during monitoring, sugars were very high. So she was forced to be on medication that too started on insulins. And she was happy with regular monitoring as we were advising because pregnancy is that particular time. If you are going to advise your patient regarding something that they should do in their management, they will do or they will continue uh, the advices being uh, given to them properly because they are very keen to have a healthy child as well. So she started monitoring as advised, but her fasting sugar as well as the PP was high. It was not getting controlled with the usual initial treatment approach. She was not having any other comorbidities. Yes, of course, she had few hypos while managing with insulins and definitely we were titrating uh, insulin dosage according to the blood sugar values and at that time the team advised on having a proper glucose monitoring rather than the usual uh, recommendation to go for six or seven times SMDG a day to titrate the insulin dosage as well as to modify the lifestyle accordingly but when we advised regarding the continuous glucose monitoring system, which she can use amidst the busy schedule which she is having at her work, she was willing and she started using that. So let me move on to the second case. You can see the second case as well. 26 year old lady, software engineer, again, a very, very busy scheduled person. Uh, she is having a hectic schedule at her work and diagnosed with GDM started on management. Initially, this particular patient was not at all willing to go for a uh, regular monitoring of blood glucose, just like what I had explained in detail regarding the uh, first case as well. But this patient, she was not willing to have uh, regular pricks. And initially, she was not even willing to go for any medical intervention as well. But the team has to convince and her gynec also discuss in detail about the uh, risk for having uncontrolled uh, blood glucose, which can uh, affect her child as well. So again, she was not having any other comorbidities. She was having hypos. She was having frequent hypos uh, by initiating and continuing the management. And again, she was not willing for regular monitoring. So with this two different case scenario, let me share with you their continuous glucose monitoring data. You may be thinking like the second case, she was not willing, but after regular and regular um, motivation and counseling, she was willing and she went for the continuous glucose monitoring initially. So the first graph, you can see the first case. Again, uh, the graph shows the continuous glucose monitoring data shows there is huge blood sugar variability. The second graph is much more worse than the first one which I have shown here. So again, we are discussing today and tomorrow and we are going to listen more and more about uh, gestational diabetes. So the increase of or the prevalence of gestational diabetes is more along with the increase in the obesity. And uh, see what why we are discussing about the better control in blood glucose level that is being highlighted here. Because you can prevent uh, something which can happen to both mother and child. So definitely the maternal glycemic control is a modifiable risk, modifiable risk factor, which can have a better uh, 
result has to be to prevent prenatal or postnatal or uh, the health issues going to happen for your pregnant mother or the child so uh, the glycemic target being recommended with the smbg levels being highlighted here very clearly i'm sure that this will be discussed in detail in these two days as well so fasting glucose 72 95 one hour post prandial 110 to 140 two hour under 2 120 so we were monitoring so many other uh, blood sugar parameters as well including hba1c but in pregnancy you know very well that uh, we are not having a clear data on the glycemic variability with regard to the, the particular patient if you are going to have just smbg or hba1c so the lack of information regarding the glycemic variability again the excursion which is happening is important and there lies the importance of going for continuous glucose monitoring and again with the data which we are discussing about time in range in diabetes management the glycemic variability which we are discussing you can see very clearly that the usage of continuous glucose monitoring excuse me yeah uh, so in type 1 Uh, type one and type two, you can very clearly see the recommendation of time in range being advised, and the different other categories of diabetes as well. So, if the patient is able to achieve better glycemic control, that is the time in range being achieved. Excuse me. In India, my sir is having money now. This is done, but I'm getting some disturbances. Yeah. So. Uh, for each 5% increase in time in range in a, a pregnant lady who is having gestational diabetes the increase in the benefits both for mother and baby is much much better that that is the the data which we can get so again uh, while discussing about the existing data which we are having already it is sure that the uh, the clinical trials or the real life scenario with the usage of continuous glucose monitoring in pregnancy is very less you can very clearly see that the, the different trials both in type 1 and type 2 diabetes and what was the outcome with the usage of continuous glucose monitoring that to the real time continuous glucose monitoring in these patients so in type 1 the data uh, shows that the uh, incidence of baby going for uh, macrosomia or the weight gain for the baby is less with the usage of proper continuous glucose monitoring as well as the other neonatal risk involved both Uh, type one studies have clearly shown, but the type two, uh, we are not having a clear cut data where uh, the CGM is being shown with benefits, just like type one study. So type one definitely you have so many data, uh, so many clinical trials or real life scenario available. So here again, going for the time in range uh, in the different time trimesters will help in reducing these events or. Associated with a lower risk of preterm birth that starts with first trimester of about forty six point two percent, eight sixty eight percent in second trimester, and more than ninety percent in third trimester. So definitely, the usage of CGM in type one diabetes will help, and in type one diabetes already these patients will be on multiple daily injections, where the CGM will be getting benefited or will be useful for proper titration of insulin as well. So here again, I am going to show the difference of. recommendations in time in range both in type 1 and type 2 being highlighted here see the first one the type 1 case in type 1 diabetes patients that time in time in range or the target range being advised is more than 70 percentage and but one by in type 2 it is a little more more than 90 percentage is the recommendation to have a better glycemic control so in type 2 as well the data is lim very limited and the technology while advancing going for more and more advancement in technology again we should have more data or patient uh, safety records available with the usage of continuous glucose monitoring in pregnancy so when uh, we compared with the healthy with mild gestational diabetic pregnant woman this was the uh, observation blood glucose remained in target in women with mild gdm but we were not able to have a proper idea or picture of the glycemic variability so when we measured the glycemic variability it was very clear that patients with gestational diabetes was having much higher glycemic excursion when compared with the healthy counterpart 
So blood glucose values were more than 160 milligram observed in 41 percentage of GDM versus 18.2 percentage typical pregnancy, and you can see the glycemic excursion which was seen in uh, gestational diabetes as well. So here again another observation was with the usage of continuous glucose monitoring, HbA1c reduction what was benefited to have a better uh, pregnancy outcome in a randomized controlled trial in Malaysia. So we we don't have that much data to discuss on time in range and the glycemic goals in pregnancy with type two diabetes and better glycemic variability being addressed will definitely help. That's what that's what the data shows. Uh, and in di gestational diabetes, definitely the variability in uh, glycemic excursion seen is very very high and which has to be addressed with the usage of proper glucose monitoring. the only way with which we can address that matter because smbg the snapshot being observed or monitored like six or seven values a day won't be giving a clear cut picture of the uh, glycemic expression why we are going to monitor the uh, continuous glucose monitoring part in uh, pregnancy so with regard to all those things in a pregnant lady let it be with regard to uh, diet physical activity my dear friend dr malay was uh, explaining in detail about the monitoring of blood glucose while the pregnant lady is going to plan for a physical activity so with regard to diet physical activity and the treatment part let it be insulin or any other thing which we are advising for the diabetes patient usage of continuous glucose monitoring will help to have an idea and to plan accordingly to have a better glycemic control but the tips which you can give or the advice which you, you can give for the gdm person while using cgm is expect out of range readings because like what i said for going for smbg you won't be getting the exact glycemic picture of that particular patient and with the usage of real time continuous glucose monitoring only the lady will be seeing her huge blood glucose values at times which are missed during the smbg do not over react for readings these readings are meant to act properly with the help of the treating uh, team involved expect slow insulin absorption make the best dietary choices definitely the continuous glucose monitoring data will help your patient to have a better diet modification so that uh, many a times what happens in gdm is you have to take care both need of mother and child so uh, the nutritional deficiency which can happen in few uh, of your diabetes patients because they fear that uh, when they have a proper healthy diet as well the sugars will go high so with the usage of continuous glucose monitoring they can plan a better diet with the help of the team and the dietitian involved in the care timing of insulin before meals see it is clearly shown in the different trimester also the difference in the insulin timing is there which again can be obtained from the continuous glucose monitoring data and again with regard to physical activity uh, which i have uh, discussed so with while using continuous glucose monitoring that is the real time monitoring where the patient is seeing the blood glucose trend or the levels or the arrows which she can have the uh, blood glucose uh, trends while monitoring with the usage of continuous glucose monitoring so with the down arrow and the up arrow the decision can be made accordingly again insulin titration can also be made with regard to the arrow or the trends which we see in the uh, glucose monitoring so different organization different forums advise on the usage of Uh, continuous glucose monitoring including the recent ada updates also it was clearly discussed that usage of technology that to the continuous glucose monitoring will definitely help in better glycemic control so this, this again shows different forums explaining and from uh, around part of the world uh, it was clearly discussed and published uh, in the pubmed that the, the uh, from the uh, paper you can see that and the recommendation or the frequency of cgm being advised with regard to the existing uh, time in range if the patient the subject is having 90 percent days you can uh, have a recommendation to go for once in 6 months and if time in range is more than 70 percent days once in 3 months and if time range is more than 50 percent days you can uh, at least do in once in 2 months time so definitely our aim or our uh, A idea is to achieve a better glycemic control among your patients. Uh, it, it won't be that easy to achieve 100 percentage time in range, but still you can try to have 
uh, better glycemic control with the usage of continuous glucose monitoring. So again, in type 1 diabetes pregnancy, more than 70% of time in range is recommended. In type 2, that is the gestational diabetes, which we see time in range uh, advised is to go for more than 90%. So with regard to the cases which I have discussed, the team involved in our diabetes care, the diabetes tele-management system where the doctor, the dietitian, uh, diabetes nurse, educator, all are involved. And these two cases which I have started with were continuously counseled and educated with regard to the usage of regular monitoring either with SMBG or for going for continuous glucose monitoring. Both of the patients were, went for uh, the continuous glucose monitoring and they are doing very well. And the first lady almost completed seven months now. Uh, blood sugars are under control. Almost 90% of uh, the glycemic uh, trend is in time in range without uh, significant hypoglycemic episode. The second case, which she was not that okay with regular monitoring, she again went for the continuous glucose monitoring, but uh, not up to the mark which we expected. So this was the observation and the case scenario which I have discussed. To, to summarize, definitely the technology will help you to manage your diabetes patients. So uh, the advancement or the newer technology with the uh, aspects of glucose monitoring being specifically discussed, definitely you will be able to control your patient's blood sugar and each incremental 5% increase in time in range is associated with clinically significant benefit in pregnancy, both not only in type 1, definitely your type 2 patients will also be getting benefit in that. But definitely our data, the available data is very less. Uh, we would have to have more and more uh, data or clinical trial involved in continuous close monitoring, in particular with pregnancy, so that our patients will have a better control without going for any complications further. So with this, I would like to conclude and I would like to thank the entire team of BSG, Dr. Ruthul, Dr. Amit, all those involved and congratulate for the whole huge success of this event. Thank you.